Coughlin is playing third. Held at short. Power at second. Francona at first. First all in center. And the first pitch of the game is fouled off. And it rolls on the ground off to the right of the plate. One strike. Calavito in right field. With Minoso in left field. Nixon doing the catching. And Perry the pitcher. So the second pitch of this big game is about to be fired. Tight to call. Right across the middle. Tony Cuccinello coaching at third. Don Guthridge over at first. Wind up again. And the pitch is swing. A high pop fly in foul territory. Strickland goes out. Easy. He's under the ball. He has it. For the going to bring up Nelson Fox. Joe Gordon, when he came out to the plate with the lineup with Al Lopez, got a tremendous hand from the crowd. Here is Nelly Fox, the number two in the back of his gray uniform, third baseman pulled in, ball is low and close, Summers the umpire. The outfield playing, shifting still around a little bit more to the left with the left fielder Minoso shallow for Fox. And Perry gets set again and fires a fastball down right on his feet. And it's a ball two count. Beautiful night for this game. So the elements will have no part in this. One way or the other, it's fair for both. It's a very nice night. Here's ball three, down too low. The on-deck man is Billy Goodman. Romano is catching in place of Lawler, who has a swollen hand. Cleveland in white, with red lettering, white socks in gray. And the pitch to Fox, might get hit the corner. This is a tremendous stadium, as we've told you many times. And a spike can hit the same spot. Spike two. Ball three, strike two. A wind up again on the pitch. Swing and a long foul. Out of play down the right field corner. of you who may be tuning in late, Apricio fouled off to the third baseman. Strickland at third, held at short, Power at second, Francona at first, Pearsall in center, Minoso in left. Here's a long fly ball, it's foul. Palavito's playing right. Gets a new baseball from Bill Summers. Rubs it around in his hands again. Now he's he's all set. Here comes the big one. Swing and a high foul outside of first. Play on the ball. Francona, a lot of room. Photographers getting out of the way. Two up. Goodman stepping in. Billy with a 239 batting average. He's been alternating at third this year with Bubba Phillips and Sammy Esposito in there occasionally. And regardless of which one has been there, the White Sox have had very fine play at third and a spike call. A foul to third and a foul outside of first. Pitched by Perry. A fastball is bounced to the first baseman. He's got it off the big hop. They'll run to the bag and an unassisted play. He's out. To Francona. Unassisted. 
So in the first half of the first inning at Cleveland, Ohio, the Chicago White Sox, three up and three down, no runs, no hits, no errors. The Cleveland Indians are now coming to bat. Early win is on the mound. He has beaten Cleveland nine out of ten times since being traded to the White Sox. His lifetime record in competition with Cleveland is 22 victories and 11 losses. Last year, early win was 4 and nothing against Cleveland. This year, he is 5-2. and two. Tonight, besides shooting for the pennant winner, he's after his 21st win of the campaign. Harris Herstall, a right-hand hitter in the batter's box, and a ball at slow. Goodman at third, Aparicio at short, Fox at second, Ted Slizewski at first, Rivera in right field, Phillips in center field, Minoso in left field, Romano the catcher, and early win is the pitcher. Herschel takes a good one, butter high, one and one. White Sox failed in their half of the first inning. Fairly close stance, the red 37 on the back of his white pinstripe uniform. The outfield playing him just about straight away. Pitch to him, a little bit high, just missed. A little bit high. Ball two, strike one. Number of stations are broadcasting this important ball game here tonight. And, of course, our broadcast goes over many, many stations. Here's a swing and a foul, and all the way down to the tip of Florida. A ball two and a strike two count on Pierso. Batting 240, 29 runs batted in, four home runs. He'll be followed by Power, 291, and then Francona, who's been one of the hottest hitters in the major leagues this year with a batting average of 364. So the 2-2 pitch is about to be served up here, and it's high, right just above the strike zone. So ball three, strike two. Urso takes off his helmet, wipes his face and forehead with his sleeve. Those metal helmets on a night like this are very, very hot. And the players are glad to get rid of them just as soon as they get on base or don't get to base. So here's the big pitch from Wynn. Swing and a pop-up in the infield. Fox going behind Kluzewski right at the edge of the grass, and he's got it for the up. and in commission he's a he's a very fine first baseman one of the best in the game and a ball is wide but with Billy Martin laid up and his loss quite a blow he's been out now for about six weeks seven weeks uh, Power has shifted over to play second base with Francona playing first where he can do an adequate job but he's no Power Power is the best fielding first baseman in the major league Here's a swing and a drive in the left center field, and it's going to be caught, and it is. Al Smith racing in the deep left center field for Powers' long blast, and he pulled it down. Here is Tito Francona. Batting 364. 77 runs batted in. He has hit 20 home runs. And the pitch to him, a ball a little bit low. No score in the first inning in this big ball game at Cleveland. Early win is set again, and the pitch to Francona swing at a breaking pitch. 
And it's one and one. Goodman at third. Aparicio at short. Fox at second. Petrozuski at first. Smith in left. Phillips in center. Rivera in right. Romano catching. And win the pitch. And a ball is missed on the corner. Ball two, strike one. The on deck man, they have Minoso batting in the cleanup slot with Nixon batting fifth. And Calavito, who's the big run spotted in man, is batting sixth. So a ball two and a strike one count on Tito Francona. And a swing and a foul. It's out of play, way off to the left. Minoso, going over his record, has 10 for 20 against Wynn. So he has a 500 batting average against early Wynn. And that is quite the big reason why uh, manager Joe Gordon has him in the cleanup slot. Ball two and a strike two count. Here's strike three. A beauty right in across the knees. He took it with a bat in his shoulder. So in the inning, it's three up and three down. No run, no hit, no error. At the end of one inning of play, White Sox, no run, no hit. Cleveland, no run, and no hit. Here's the big former National League slugger, Ted Wazuski, stepping in with a batting average of 319. He has nine runs batted in. He's hit two home runs, and he hits them in the same ball game. And the first pitch to him is in on his shoes, ball one. It's a good crowd tonight. It is no sellout by any means, and a strike call. may be that the fact that the White Sox have quite an edge here over Cleveland has something to do with the crowd, and maybe this controversy that the papers have been full of over here between Lane and Gordon has also chilled some of the fans. And if it does, that's too bad, because Cleveland made quite a comeback here this year, attendance-wise. Ball two, strike one. Swing and a foul way back out here in the upper deck. It's two and two. Number eight, Ted Klazuski. And a swing and a ground foul. Two and strike two. Here's the pitch to clue. Swing and a smash foul. A bank of photographers back at first base, and the boys really moved that time. No one wanted to get mixed by that ball. Clue's getting a little dirt on his hands. Now leaning on the bat, knocks the dirt off his shoes with a heavy end. He's got his foot right up on that inside line. Bill Summers, the plate umpire. Pitcher gets ready, and a ground ball to the first baseman. The run to the bag. It's an easy play. He's out. Francona on assist. Here's Romano. John Romano stepping into the batter's box. He's done a fine job whenever he's called on and has been one of the outstanding pinch hitters of the year with a 615 batting average. He's got eight for 13 and three walks. And he bats right-handed just a little bit too low. The catcher tried to pull that one up to get it in the 
strike zone, but these major league umpires are, are pretty hard to fool with that maneuver. And it's a ball to Romano. And the pitch to him, a swing and a high fly ball into right field. Palomino going back to his right. He's right in front of the screen, and he's got it pretty hard. Now let me remind all of you again that around the outfield, there's an eight-foot wire fence. An eight-foot wire fence. A number of times we've seen outfielders back up against that fence on balls that were going to clear it, get an arm over it, and catch a ball. It's 365 to the fence in left center, 410 in straight center field, 365 in right center. Press the batter, and it's ball low. Here at Cleveland, in this uh, circular ballpark, it's 320 feet exactly down the foul line, but then because it is a circle, the stands extend much farther out. A swing and a miss, and it's one and one. A ball one and a strike one count, and a swing on a lot of fist and a miss. One and two count on Al Smith with two out in the top of the second inning. Perry, a right-hander against early win. A veteran and a youngster. A fellow who's been through these wars many, many times. Early win. A one and two count. The pitch to Smith. Swing. Suck it up. So it's three up and three down. No run. No hit. No errors. And at the end of the first half of the second inning, White Sox have no runs, no hits, no errors. Cleveland, no runs, no hits, no errors. The rest is Minoso. Main figure in the big deal that sent Wynn and Smith to Chicago and Minoso to Cleveland is in the batter's box. Against Wynn, he's had 10 for 20 in a 500 batting average. He's starting the bottom of the second. No score in the game, and a high foul. It's curving. It's going out of play. Francona batting 400 against Wynn. Palavito, 267. Power, 200. Nixon, 200. Strickland, 182. Pearsall, 143. Baxis, 125. Held, 0.63. Against early win, Woody Held has had one for 16, so he's really had a rough time. That one was a home run. Pitch to Minoso. Oh, he hit. Minoso was hit on the left wrist with a pitch ball. Now you hear people booing without even thinking. Now, naturally, a pitcher is not going to throw in an important game like this and hit a man. People just sometimes do that without even thinking. Now, Minoso, as we've said many, many times, is hit oftener than any other player in the big leagues because he gets up so close to the plate. He's right up on top of it. That is the 16th time this year that Minoso has been hit with a pitch ball. We'll get the top total for the White Sox. Waller, most for the White Sox, nine. So you see, Minoso, that was the case when he was with the White Sox. He was hit more than anybody else because of his stance. He gets right up there, very, very close to the plate. So he's on first base. The batter is Nixon, who bats left-handed. And the pitch to him, Spike Cole. Russ Nixon, batting left-handed. A 239 batting average, 28 runs batted in. So many at first, early win, facing this stocky left-handed hitter. In the bottom of the second inning, 
The outfield is playing him straight away. He's not essentially a type of hitter that pulls every ball. So these kind of fellows you just don't move around on. So a man on, Vinny Minoso, becomes the first base runner and wins the top of the line. Minoso is the first base runner in tonight's game and he has reached being hit with a pitch ball. The on-deck man is the right fielder, Rocco Colavito. Also edging. Here's a swing and a foul. It's back here to the left. Strike two for Nixon. In the National League, the Phillies beat Cincinnati in the first game of a twi-night doubleheader, 3-1. Cubs beat the Giants this afternoon, 5-4. to four. Going to make it awfully tough for the Giants to get back into contention. Detroit beat Kansas City, 6-4. to four. And Boston and Baltimore, the Yankees and Washington, are just getting underway. Here we're in the second inning with no score, win, and ferry. Minosco's running, swinging the ground ball, hit, center field. Minosco racing around the third. And there was a hit, flash right through the center of the diamond. With Minosco running, and the Indians have runners on first and on third with nobody else. Now they had to hit the run play on that time. He, this was not an attempt to steal. He was running on a signal, and the batter was instructed by a signal to swing and to hit that ball. We not only hit it, he splashed a clean hit right through the box and hit it like a bullet so that Cleveland has runners on first and on third with nobody out in the bottom of the second inning. That is hit number one in the ball. Here's Colavito with a 258 batting average and a ball is way off the Palavito is the big run batted in man on this team with 108. He's also the leader in home runs on the Cleveland club with 41. So we have a very fast man on third and not too fast. Here's a swing on a let up pitch and a miss. And it's one and one. The on deck man is the shortstop Woody Held. A very fast man on third for Cleveland. A base runner at first, not too fast. That's Nixon. And a lot of excitement here now. Boy, this is a ball game where no one wants to be distracted in any way. They just want to look. They just came to see one of the biggest, most important ball games of the year. in the first jam of the night here in the bottom of the second inning and a ball is up too high up too high ball two strike one the outfield is playing Tomavito around just a little bit to the left Smith is a deep left field in center field, it's Bubba Phillips. A ball two and a strike one count on Calavito. And a swing and a very high fly ball into shallow left field. Now let's see whether they gamble and send him in. Here he comes. Here's the throw. He's out at the plate. Out at the plate. A perfect throw. Al Smith to Romano. And Minosco was out at the plate. So there, on a high fly ball into left field near the foul line, Smith got off another perfect throw, and boy, he's been absolutely great this year. And they nailed Minoso attempting to score, and there's the first big thrill of the night. So now, on that throw to the plate, Nixon went to second base, and it's going to bring up Woody Held with two up. Well, there 
was a great throw. Man, did he have. He had a lot of thing back of that throw, and that one really came in right down that line. Smith using that left field foul line as a guide on his throw and got it right into Romano's glove. So the batter is what he held, and a ball that's blowing out guard. So now instead of runners on first and third and nobody out, we have a man on second base and two out. No scores, a big White Sox Cleveland game. Number three, Woody Held. The Cleveland shortstop with a runner at second and a strike call right across the wing, one and one. Boy, Smith got off a beautiful throw. Gee, that was a beautiful throw, and man, what a clutch throw. With Pinocchio, one of the fastest men in baseball, legging it for the plate, Smith cut him down with a perfect pace. So Nixon's at second. We have a one-and-one one count on Held. Early win is getting set again, and a high pop-up back of first base. Klazuski backing up. He's in foul territory. He's got it. And the White Sox are out of a very, very big game. So in the inning, no runs, one hit, a hit batsman, and one man left on the base. So there was a great cut throw by Smith. And at the end of two innings of play, at the end of two in this ball game, it's Cleveland, no runs, one hit, no errors. White Sox, no runs, no hit, and no errors. Fans, we're going into the top half of the third inning. The batter's Rivera. That's left-handed. 217 batting average. 15 runs batted in and two home runs. And the first pitch to him was down very low for ball one. This is the third inning of the ball game of the year. It's low again. Inside is ball two. Now, as you can understand, there's quite a psychological advantage to getting out in front in a game like this. Cleveland really had a chance with runners on first and third and nobody out. But a great throw by Smith prevented Cleveland from getting ahead. Here's a swing and a fly ball to right. Should be caught. Conovito coming in, going toward the foul line. He's got it. One Conovito moves easily on that ball in a few steps and over about seven or eight toward the foul line. That's going to bring up the center fielder. He's in there in place of Landis, who is here tonight and in uniform and was getting some exercise out there in the outfield. Also had a little bit of batting practice. And I believe that manager Lopez plans to lose it, use him over in the Detroit series. Here's a pop fly to center. It may drop. It does drop. Base hit, center field. So Phillips. Loop one over second base in the center field for the first White Sox hit. It's a hit apiece. It's going to bring up early win. Here is early win coming out. He was one of the big four over here with Cleveland for many years. And a big winner over here for the Indians. One of his biggest years, he won 23 ball games. Tonight he's shooting for his 21st. Amazing, an amazing story when you stop and think about the other members of that big four. Fuller is, is not pitching anymore. Garcia is about, uh, his career is about at an end. Lemon retired, and here's early win with 20 victories. the ball over to first base. Phillips was back in time. Wynn takes a high outside pitch of ball. 
He's a switch hitter, and he's batting left-handed. Let's get a station break in right here. This is the WCFL Chicago White Sox Baseball Network. Tight call. A slider across the knee. A ball one and a strike one count. Went up about an inch and a half off the end of the bat. A swing, a liner foul down the third baseline. Well tagged. Hits the wall and ricochets and rolls out into left field where Minoso throws it out there to a ball boy who's in foul territory. Early win. Batting left-handed. Phillips, who singled after one out, is on first base. And the ball is up high, two and two. Strike two. No score in the game. Perry is a tall, slim right-hander. Working now on his opponent, early win. Here's the pitch to him. Fastball, a swing, a pop fly. Shallow left. Shortstop going out. Minoso coming in. Shortstop calling for the ball. Makes a one-hand, gloved hand catch to the ball. He's now running back into the infield. Now there are two gone. Two out in the top of the third. With Phillips at first base, the batter Aparicio. He popped out to the third baseman in foul territory the first time up. And the pitch to him. A little bit outside. He was tempted to go for it, but he held up. Ball. He was tempted to swing, but he held up. Louis Aparicio. And a swing and a fly ball down the right field corner. Fair foul. It's a fair ball. Here's the throw into the infield. Here's Phillips coming to the plate. Here's the throw in. And he scores. Scores. Sox lead one to nothing. scored and the White Sox have taken the lead. A run has scored and the White Sox have taken the lead as Calavito picked that ball up in right field and threw it towards second base and let Phillips leg it in with the first run of the ball game and the White Sox are out in front now by a one to nothing score. It's a two base hit for Aparicio. That is the second hit for the White Sox. Cleveland has one. There's going to be a, a, well, the trainer's out at the mound now. Looks like Nixon may have had his foot stepped on as Phillips scored. But he came racing around third base. He never put the brakes on at all. But the throw from right field was in toward second base to Woody Held. And they let the runner score where... Calavito should have thrown the ball to Francona and turned the play into the plate, and I don't think that Phillips would have been able to score. So there was a mental lapse there, and the White Sox took advantage of it with that speed, and Phillips has scored, and Fox is up with a teammate at second base and two outs. Credit Aparicio with a double, and a run batted in. Come on, Elliot, keep it going, baby! Here's the pitch to Fox. It's up high. Ball one. So with the runner legging it for third, Phillips, Calavito should have thrown that ball in in the direction of first base to Francona and had a relay play into the plate. Here's a ball. It's off the corner at the knee for ball two. Instead of that, 
He made the long throw to second base, trying for Aparicio, and then when Harold fired the ball into the plate, it was too late. Nixon missed him with the tag, and he got by and scored. So the White Sox have drawn first blood, ball three of five. And boy, Aparicio really picked out a spot to lay that ball. Right down the right field line, it hit the green wall in front of the seats down there and bounced back perfectly to Colavito. He had a big break on the bounce. But he made a long throw from the corner to second base, and Phillips kept right on going and scored. Three and nothing is the count on the box. Ball four time. Cuccinello at third, whose job it is to direct the base runners, never hesitated. He just had the go, go, go sign on for Phillips, and he just came around third like a jackrabbit, and he scored. Now we have Sox runners on first and second, and the batter is really good. Fastball, a hit down the right field line. It's going down in there for a long drive, and a run is going to score. Here's Fox. No, he's going to hold up at third, but a run scores, and the White Sox are leading two to nothing. There was a long double down in the same spot that Aparicio hit the ball. Calavito fired the ball into second base, but Goodman was in there safely. Fox held up at third, and the White Sox now have a two to nothing lead as Aparicio has scored. Well, that's a big two base hit. A big two-base hit for Billy Goodman. Hit for Zuski. Is the batter with runners at second and third, and they're going to walk him. They're going to pass him to get it for Romano. There were two out and two men on. And they figure that in this way, it is a percentage play. You see, with, if there was only one out and they walked him, then it's a percentage play hoping for a double play, maybe plate to first base. Here it's still a percentage play, and as the old percentage, sometimes it's overemphasized of a right-hand pitcher against a right-hand batter rather than pitching to a powerful left-hand hitter. So we'll see. The bases are loaded. Ted Pozuski was just given an intentional pass. has started to throw in the bullpen in right center field for Cleveland. The White Sox are leading two to nothing. Well, Romano has been doing it in a pinch all year. And he's up here in a pinch now in a spot where he can really do some good. As the White Sox have the bases loaded, they're leading two to nothing. There are two off, and Perry is ready to fire. Jim Perry swings a smash at the shortstop. A long throw to first base. He's out. Retiring the side. Oh, that ball was hit like a bullet. Woody Hell backed up and grabbed that ball off a high hop. Hit very, very sharply. And Romano was thrown out. So, in that inning, there were two runs. One, two, three hits. Two of them were doubles. There were two walks, one intentional, and there were three men left on the base. And so, fans, at the end of the first half of the third inning here at Cleveland, it's the White Sox, two runs, three hits, no errors. Cleveland, no runs, one hit, and no errors. Where the Chicago White Sox, aiming for their first pennant in 42 years, are leading two to nothing. The batter is George Strickland, third baseman, a veteran. A swing and a foul off to the right, out of play. Milwaukee is taking a one-run lead on Pittsburgh.
Right hand hitter in the batter's box. He set again, and a ball is tied. The outfield playing fairly deeper on Strickland. Ball one and strike one. George hitting on the 238. He's set again, and a ball that's in close. Forty years since the White Sox won a pennant. Boy, this will really be something if they win this one tonight. Because this is it. If they win this game tonight, they clinch the pennant. Win is getting set. Here's the next one to Strickland, and it's high. Ball three. and strike one for George Strickland. Two Cleveland hitters have reached so far. In the second, Minoso was hit with a pitch ball. And Nixon singled. And a ball he walked. Here's an argument now. Wynn didn't like that call. Early Wynn walked in front of the pitcher circle, yelling at the plate umpire, Bill Summers. And here is Perry coming out. A pretty good hitter, by the way. With a 3.06 batting average. He's had 15 for 49, one triple, five runs batted in. He bats left-handed. So Cleveland, in their half of the third, they get the first man up on base. And Wynn is ready to pitch to Perry, and it's way outside, ball one. <laughs> Early win with the number 24 in the back of his gray uniform on his opponent, Jim Perry, and Perry steps out, and the umpire raises his hand, signaling, don't fit. And when he takes it down, that means go ahead. Wins ready. Here's a high foul coming back up here and out of play, and a ball one, and a strike one pass. Angeles at St. Louis. That game is getting underway. Milwaukee leads Pittsburgh one to nothing in the second. The Giants lost five to four at Chicago. Keeping you posted on all of the teams in the pennant scramble. Perry a liner foul into the stand. And a ball one and a spike two count. White Sox have two runs, three hits, have committed no errors. Cleveland, no runs, one hit, and no errors. Cleveland had a great chance to score in the second, but a great throw from left field by Smith. Cut down a runner at the plate. White Sox have gone out ahead in their half of the third, two to nothing. And the Indians are batting in their half of the third, with Wynn working on third. And a little tap along the third baseline. Goodman going to first with the ball. Out. One away. He advanced the runner to second base. No sacrifice. Perry was swinging away. He was trying to hit the ball. And that's going to bring up the center fielder, Jimmy Pearsall. Cleveland base runner at second. And first all, the battery pops out the first time up. Down a little bit low with a sinker, ball one. Billy Goodman at third, Apricio out there at short. 
playing in about five or six feet off the outfield grass. Fox about the same way, same way with Clue. Here's a swing out of this. He took a murderous cut at that ball as he curved him up across the letters. Pearsall had that ball right in his eyes, and he cut hard on it and missed it, and it's one and one. Jimmy Pearsall used to be with the Boston Red Sox for many, many years. This is his first year with Cleveland. Red 37 on the back of his uniform. He made it second base. The Sox lead two to nothing. In the big one, the game of the year. Wind working slowly. The crowd starting to yell a bit. Wynn and Romano. Wynn evidently having just a little bit of trouble reading a sign, and Romano has gone out there now to talk with him. Here is Romano headed back toward the plate. First of all, getting a little dirt on his hands. He's on the outline of the batter's box, and now he's stepping in. This is Jimmy Persol. The teammate at second base. And the pitch. Strike. There was a fastball, and here's the batter yelling now. Looks to be about letter high, and Persol didn't like that at all. And boy, he's really yelling now. Persol is really sore about that one. Boy, he's really putting it on here. He's still out there, and he is really letting the plate umpire have it. Well, the ball one and a strike two count on Pearsall. Runner at second base, and one out. Surly Wynn gets his sign again. Here it is. And a high fly ball. In the shallow center field, Phillips coming on. It's his ball, and he's got it. He took it right in front of Smith in left center field. First of all, in the mood he was in, was in a mood to swing at anything. And Wynn fed him one up there that he looked like he would uppercut and get it up into the air, and he flied out. So Wynn worked on him that time, knowing that first of all was fit to be tied, and it worked. That's going to bring up the second baseman, Vic Power. Here's Power in the batter's box. Still with the teammate at second base. There were two outs. The Sox lead two to nothing in the third inning. Perry and Wynn. Sox came up with three nice hits. And they're half of the inning, a single and two doubles. Power takes a beauty, a breaking pitch across the way, strike call. One strike. Early win. Working on big power. And a pop-up near the mound. Shortstop, Aparicio coming on. It's his ball, and he puts it away. So in that inning, the last half of the third, there were no runs, no hits, a walk, and one man left on the bases. At the end of three full innings of play, White Sox have two runs, three hits, Cleveland, no runs, and one hit. Fans were at the end of three. The Sox are leading two to nothing in the big game of the year. Bob Elson saying goodbye for a little while. Here's Don Well. By Perry hit one sharply, but right out many out in left field. So with one down, here comes Jim Rivera. Early went a great steady tonight out there on the mound. Smitty, who struck out in the second, is now 0 for 2. Rivera is 0 for 1. He flies to right field to Calavito in the third. 
The inning in which the White Sox scored their two runs, two runs on three hits. Strickland playing up on the edge of the infield grass at third, and the pitcher of that down low to him for ball one. behind us in the upper deck. Even count, one ball and one strike. Perry retired the White Sox in order in the first inning and again in the second. And then the White Sox came up with a single by Phillips and doubles by Apprish and Goodman. Swing and a miss by Rivera. Wheeled around on that pitch. Good curve by Perry to make it one and two. One ball and two strikes. The on-deck man is Bubba Phillips. First half of the fourth inning, and the White Sox lead 2-0. Here's the motion by Perry, and the slim right-hander offers a lineup with swing and a high pop-up on the first base side. Tito Franco up on the edge of the grass by a couple of steps, and he takes it in. So Rivera went for that change delivered by Perry and popped it up and out. And with two gone, here's the center fielder, Bubba Phillips. He popped a fly ball straight away center field that got things rolling in the third. And Calavito throw to second base instead of trying to make the play on Phillips at the plate. Or to at least uh, for sure that the White Sox would hold runners to second and third. Set the stage for the White Sox two runs. Here's a windup and the pitch. Found a high fly ball left field. Minoso getting camped out of this one. Standing back a couple of steps over to his left. A couple of steps and he takes it in. Three up and three down go the White Sox in that half of the fourth inning. So with nothing across, the score and the totals at the end of the first half of the fourth. The White Sox, two runs, three hits and no errors. And the Cleveland Indians, no runs, one hit and no errors. Waiting out for the Cleveland Indians as we open their half of the fourth inning will be first baseman Tito Francona. He was called out in strikes in the first inning. When tonight has been like a master chef preparing a very fine dish. He has measured, carefully measured, every single pitch. Taking plenty of time between pitches. Here's the lineup, and they deliver to Francona. Swing and a foul. Back on the screen, strike one. On deck is Manoso, then the catcher, Russ Nixon. When it's only heated up once, on a call made by Bill Summers, over the span of the first three innings. That's just about par for early. He has one strike on Francona, left-handed batter, right side of the infield, Fox midway between first and second. The outfield shaded the bit to the right, and the pitch. Here's one, knuckleball, got away from Romano, and it's even up at one and one. The fans thinking that Wim perhaps has thrown something else, and he was just, it just slipped away from him, but it was a knuckleball, and it did get away from him, went high and away, and as Romano went after that dancing baseball, it popped out of his net and off to the left side of the plate. Even up count, one and one on Francona. He's the lead man here in the last half of the fourth, and they wind up and the pitch in there, tight call, beauty, right over the outside corner of the plate. Wind goes from spot to spot on every hitter. What a master craftsman. One and two the count. He's ready. Very deliberate motion out there. Ready to wheel in the next pitch, and he did. Slider up too high, even up two and two. Two balls and two strikes. Rivera out in right field. Bubba Phillips in center, and a couple of steps toward right center. Al Smith straight away out in left field. As Francona can handle that outside pitch rather well. Double the two-two count. Here's the windup, and he strides down with the next pitch. He's playing in a high pop-up, left side. Aparicio is going out, still carrying it out. Smith is getting out of it now. Petty comes in a bit more, and he takes it. Pop fly ball. Hit up on the left side, and we do have a light breeze blowing across the right field foul line toward left. So as Louis started back for the ball, just backing up, then he turned his back on the infield and started out. And Al Smith shelled it up in left center field and put it away. So with one down, here's the left fielder, Benny Minoso. 
Manasso was hit by a pitch in the second inning. The White Sox trying to end it all tonight here in Cleveland. And they have a 2 nothing lead for Wynn to protect. Here's the lineup and they pitch to many. Down too low to him. One ball, no strike. Around the infield, Klazuski, Fox, Aparicio, and Billy Goodman. Louis is midway between second and third. Waiting now as Wynn offers to Minoso. Swung and a drive out of the right center field. Breaking back for the ball. Bubba Phillips, he's back there. He grabbed that ball and tumbled into the fence. Bubba Phillips went back in deep into right center field for that drive that got by Minoso. Grabbed that ball, lost his footing, tumbled into the wire fence just beyond the 380 foot mark by a few feet. But he held on to the ball, and that is out number two. Good boy, Bubba. Here's the catcher, Russ Nixon. He singled in the second inning. He has the only hit off early win. Flat one right between his feet. Hit it right back to the box. Took off on a high hop and went out over second base. That sent Minoso around to third, but the Indians failed to score. Two out with nobody on, and the pitch there now up too high. Curveball, ball one. Left-handed hitter. Nixon, who was sidelined for much of the season series between these two teams. And the pitch on a swing and a ground ball off of the short shot side. Louis bobbles that ball. And he Nixon is taken first. No throw is made. Clap ratio. Moving to his right. Bobble the ball. That will be the first error of the night. Puts the man on, and it brings up the right fielder, Rocky Colorado. Flies left field in the second inning. He puts one well, taken by Smith. And it was on that fly ball down the left field line. And Smitty made the catch, and a beautiful throw to the plate to Neil Minoso coming in. Front of it first base with two outs. The pitch is swing and a miss. Just an easy swing that time by Colavito as though he couldn't quite make up his mind as to what type of pitch that was going to be. And it's one strike. So every inning will be a hot run here in Cleveland. The Indians have runner on at first base. On the air by Aparicio. Russ Nixon camp there. Klazuski playing away from the bag. Aparicio pulled over in deep short. That's the way they play the full hitter, Calavito. And the outfield is deep and around to the left. They give him a lot of right field. Here's the stretch by win, and the pitch is on its way. Up too high to him. Even up count one and one. Well, let's get in a station break right here. This is the WCFL Chicago White Sox Baseball Network. Even up count on Rockies, one and one. 108 RBIs for him during the year. Here's the lead by Nixon, about five or six feet away from the bank at first. And the pitch is on its way. Colavito playing high fly ball. Straight away center field. Bubba Phillips came in. Now he's dropping back a few more steps to his right a bit. He's got it. That retires the side. That'll work, Gus. So the Indians in their half of the fourth inning. No run. No hit. One white shot there. One man left. So far, they have stranded three. Fans the star in the total. At the end of four innings to play, this is Don Wells with Bob Olson at Municipal Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio. The White Sox, two runs, three hits, and one error. And the Indians, no runs, one hit, and no error. Waiting out for the White Sox as we open the fifth inning will be the pitcher early win. Run has popped out in the third, and the first delivery to him here by Perry is down low for ball one. Perry has been beaten by the White Sox twice this season. Without shocking up a win, and they deliver to Gus. is swing and a line drive at Power. Stabbed that one hand. Wynn really poked one to right center field, but Power right in the path of the ball. Reached up with his glove hand, slapped at it, and got it. So we have one down. Here's the shot stop, Louis Aparicio. His double. A big hit in the third. That double down the right field line. 
Stayed only a matter of a few feet inside the line as it went into the corner. Not enough to give the White Sox their first run. Give Leary his 51st out of the eye. The pitch to Leary is playing a high foul fire down the left field line. No play on it. Strike one. Leary Aparicio in there in the batter's box. He's one for two tonight. The on-deck man is Fox. Here's the motion by Perry and the pitch to Leary. Fell away from it. Up around his 10. One and one. Milwaukee has the one nothing lead over the Pirates. Their game in the fourth. The other big game between the Dodgers and the Cardinals, ready to get underway. Cincinnati and the Phillies, no score in the second inning of their second game. Here's the 1 1 pitch now to Lewis. Uh, Lewis playing ground ball base hit in the hall between short and third to left field. Aparicio riding the bag at first by a step, but also gets that ball into Woody Held. The White Sox have their fourth hit. That brings up the second base, Benelli Fox. I don't have to tell you what the chat will be here. We have a tremendous Chicago representation here at Municipal Stadium tonight. And they'd like to see Aparicio try for number 55. He's the weight of a good lead there at first. Here's the motion. The pitch box swing. Fly ball right field. Going to be captured out there by Calavito. In a couple of steps after moving to his left, he takes it. And that is up number two. So Foxy offered on the first pitch by Perry. And sent an easy fly ball to Calavito. Nelly tonight is 0 for 2. He had walked in the third. Here's Billy Goodman. Billy ripped out a double in the third. That drove in around his 26th of the year. Two out, runner at first. And the pitch is on its way. Goodman swings, base hit, right side of the field. Here comes Aparicio around second on his way to third. Pearsall makes the pick up, gets that throw to Vic Maher's second base, and Goodman comes up with his second base hit. Boy, can he sing him. Billy Boyd just sung one to right center between Power and the bag of second, so we have runners at first and third. Another threat. And there are two out. Here's Ted Brzezinski. Big Clue drew an intentional walk in the third. He had bounced out to Francona in the second. Well, a big extra inning poke here by Klazuski, which really helps to set the White Sox up. The last time we were here, Klazuski managed to fly ball deep in right field, right out against the 365-foot mark taken by Calavito, and the pitch outside at the waist, ball one. Time is called as Nixon now has gone out to talk to Perry. Aparicio's on a third. And with Perry going into the windup, Nixon with the idea in mind of just reminding Perry of what little guy happens to be their third. And any ideas that they... White Sox might have in a situation like this. Here's the stretch taken by Perry. The pitch to Clue. It's playing at a ground ball. Vic Power will make the pick up of this. Here's Matt. Here's the throw to first. He got it. That retires the star. So the White Sox had a set going. Something brewing in their half of the fifth inning. But Klazuski bounced out to Power. And the net result. No run. There were two hits. No Cleveland errors. Two men left. So far, the White Sox have stranded five. Stands the score at the end of the first half of the fifth inning at Municipal Stadium in Cleveland. The White Sox two runs, five hits, and one error. And the Indians no runs, one hit, and no error. Now the Cleveland half of the fifth inning, and here's the shortstop Woody Hill. This will be the bottom third of the batting order. Popped out, first time up, and the pitch to him by when curved him away for ball one. Now, and for the most part, keep that ball away from hell. Can't keep it out there forever, however. He'll have to do with most hitters, move it around, but he doesn't want to give Woody Hell anything tight to look at and to get a good cut on. Here's the swing and a miss. That's a good curveball. Between the waist and the letters, and it's even at one and one. (laughs) 
Helms had asked for the hitter's Rossin bag from the on-deck man Strickland. Then it flipped it back to him. The outfield, Smith, Phillips, Rivera straight away. Same for the infield, Goodman, Aparicio, Fox, and Klazuski from clear to round the first. Held a right-handed hitter with a slightly closed stance. And in contrast to Minoso, stands rather well back from the plate. Here's the motion and the 1-1 pitch now, and it's down too low. This time early, 1-1 fully overarmed. And the pitch is flatter. He got too low to make it 2-1. When he has that pitch upstairs to any other hitter except Hell, it can be a very effective pitch. Here's the 2-1 pitch to him now. This got away from Romano. Right through the webbing of his net. The ball free to make it 3-1. So early is off to the same count here in balls and strikes as he was with Strickland when Strickland came up to lead off the third. He walked Strickland. Then he got Perry to bounce out. He got first all on a fly ball and he got power to pop out to Louis. He's off of the 3-1 count. Let's see what happens here. Here's the windup and the pitch now to held and it's in a bit too close. Ball four. Three of the five plays of innings tonight, the lead man has reached. Manasso reached when he was hit by a pitch in the second. Strickland reached with a base on ball in the third. And now Hell gets on with a walk here in the fifth. Chuck Tanner coming out here to bat for Strickland. Chuck Tanner. Now bat for Strickland. Tanner has appeared in nine games. 34 at bat. Eight hits. One double, no triples, no homers, three RBIs, and a batting average of 235. Guys saw some, quite, uh, quite a bit of service in the National League, seeing some of the American League now with his Cleveland team. So he is stepping in, he's a left-handed hitter. Stepping in against early win with Woody held on at first. Strickland has been lifted. Muscat Grant continues to throw on the bullpen out in right field. So we'll see what manager Joe Gordon has in mind with the pitcher due up next. White Sox lead 2 0. Here's the stretch taken by Wynn and the pitch on the way to Tanner. Strike call. White Sox fair ball. Nothing in one. Milwaukee has that one nothing lead over the Pirates in the fourth. Giants lost today, so they drop back away from the Dodgers and the Braves some more. Here are the Sox lead by two runs that they picked up in the third. Stretch by win. Here's the pitch on the way. And Tanner swings a foul back and out of play into the upper deck off to our left. Two strikes. Tanner may see a knuckle ball here. Two strikes on him. Wynn is way ahead of the hitter. Runner at first. Held. Standing on the bag with him. Ted Suzuki. Left-handed hitter, but the outfield doesn't shade him very much. In fact, they're almost perfectly straight away. Two strikes on him now as Wynn studies the situation and apparently again is having trouble in getting the sign from John Romano. Wynn has the motion. He doesn't flick his glove when he can't read the sign. He just takes his bare hand, his right hand, and whips it across the front of his uniform a couple of times to sort of say, well, come on, let's see it again. Or let me see something that I want to throw this guy. Now time is called. Romano is going out to talk to Wynn. an understandable thing. Uh, Waller, of course, does the bulk of the catching for the White Sox. And uh, you might say that Waller and Wynn or any of the other pitchers on the White Sox staff are really in tune because Waller has an excellent idea of how every pitcher works, particularly in certain situations, say such as this, with two strikes, no balls and two strikes on a hitter. So Romano 
who catches on an infrequent basis. And when having a little bit of trouble communicating here, but now apparently everything is set. John behind the plate again. Here's the lead by Woody Howell there at first. Stretch taken by Wynn, and the pitch is on the way. A swing, a foul, no play. Down the left field line and into the upper tier. So it's still two strikes. The Yankees have tied Washington 1-1 one one in the fourth. Boston leading Baltimore 2-0 in the third. This afternoon, Detroit beat Kansas City 6-4. In the National League, Milwaukee with a 1-0 lead over the Pirates in the fourth. Chuck beat San Francisco 5-4. Cincinnati and the Phillies scoreless in the third of their second game. Stretch again by Wynn. He has two strikes on Tanner and the pitch. We outside. There were the knuckles. And Boy Romano had to dive to his left to make a stop with that pitch. Good stop by John. One and two. A few times that Wynn has saw the knuckleball tonight, he's been way off the target with it. So he may dispose of it completely in the rest of his pitching plans for the evening. Just doesn't seem to be able to control it. One ball and two strikes on the batter and the pitch. There's one outside, even up two and two. Two balls and two strikes on Tanner. He's batting for Strickland. Come on, Gus. Really bear down here. Woody Hell with the base on balls. The second walk given up by Wynn is there at first base. The weight of his lead. Here's the stretch by Wynn. And the 2 2 delivery is on the way. A swing, a foul. He's guarding that play well. Fouled it back on the screen. So he is giving Wynn quite a battle. It's still even two and two. This is another of the many individual battles in baseball that makes it such a terrific sport. Here, got a hitter up there. He's had two strikes on him. Got those on him almost at once. And now his idea, of course, he's got to guard that plate. Same time, Wynn doesn't want to get any deeper behind in the count. He's even at two and two. Here's the check now. And the pitch is on the way. A swing and a foul tip. No, swing and a miss. Popped out of Romano's hands and with a runner out at first. Nowhere for the batter Tanner to go. Looked like he might have fouled Tipton as it rolled out in front of the plate of the first base side, but he swung on it and missed for strike three. A runner at first base, Woody Hill. So Tanner, even though Romano dropped the ball, he is out of there. Now we're going to have a batter for the pitcher, Perry. Now batter for Perry. Gotta be Coleman, an infielder. This is Jordan Coleman. Coleman had just joined the Cleveland club. He has appeared in only one game, and he picked up one hit in one of that. He tripled. So you can figure out his average. And he has scored one Cleveland run. Laid by Woody Held at first base. And the pitch is on the way, outside, blown away for ball one. Milwaukee has a 2-1 to lead over the Pirates in the fifth. Los Angeles, St. Louis, no score has been posted. Pitchers have been up there for some time, but nothing in the game itself. The Cardinal pitcher was belted out in the first inning. The reason we don't have any score up there on the board. Win is ready. One up and count, and the pitch to him now. Swinging a bounding ball over the pitcher's head. Lloyd back to second, stands and fires the first. Save the first, he beat it out. Bounced over the pitcher's mound, went out and back to second base, actually took in the ball on the first base side of the bag. Got his throw away to Klesiski, but Coleman with good speed up the line, and the Indians have runners at first and second, and here is Persall. 
Drift on up for the third time. He popped out of the first inning, five to center in the third. The Indians have runners at first and second. Fairly strong in the bullpen. Early went in trouble here, but went away. Went has faced a lot of trouble before, however. Let's see if he can measure up to it now. Here's a swing, the foul. It's out of play. Off to the right, end of the upper deck, strike one. Boy, he really measured up to it in the second inning when he hit Minoso, and then the single by Nixon through the box put runners at first and third with nobody out. Calavito's fly ball to Smith in left field. The wind got a tremendous assist from Smitty on the double play when he fired a perfect strike on the fly to Romano at the plate to get Minoso coming in. And then Woody Hell popped out to retire the side. So one strike on the batter, Pearsall. Right-handed hitter. Two men on. Held at second. Coleman is on at first. Here's the motion. And the pitch is on its way to Pearsall. Swing and a drive out of the left center field. It's out there for a base hit. Now the fourth makes a stab of the ball. Runners are going to be at first and third. And the run is in. the left center field. Bubba Phillips got over for it. Had to make a quick stab at that ball to keep it from getting up over his head on a high bounce. Woody Held came in to score. Coleman raced around to third. Pearsall stayed at first. Here is Vic Power now with only one out and a chance to tie it up. So it's a rough, tough situation for early win in the White Sox. They're lead in jeopardy now. Some of that dirt in the pitcher's mound. Tremendous noise there at Municipal Stadium in Cleveland. As Vic Power is right, has gone out. He tied out in the first. He popped out in the third. Stepped in now against Wynn. Early stepped away from the pitching over. First all, they try to give him plenty of trouble there at first base. You know that. Vic Power easing that bat back and forth, back and forth, and waiting now for Wynn to get ready. Staying right in there on the batter's box. Pearsall jumps away to his lead there at first. Trying to upset Wynn. Wynn takes the stretch. Here's the motion. Here's the pitch. And it's outside of the main ball one. The game now stands at 2-1. to one. The White Sox lead by a run. That run is on at third with one out. Nothing count on Vic Power. When ready, and they pitch to him now. Swing it a ground ball, double play ball. Louis to Fox for one. Relay to boost in time, double play. Man alive, a double play. Slap that one to Aparicio to Foxy for the force out there. The relay to Pazuski in time to complete the twin killing and retire the side. A mighty important double play for the White Sox. The most important, perhaps, that they have racked up all season long. So the net result for the Indians, they came up with one run. There were two hits, one an infield hit. No White Sox errors. One man left. Fans to score in the totals at the end of five. The White Sox have two runs, five hits, and one error. The Indians have one run, three hits, and no errors. of the game tonight, the Cleveland Indians have brought on a new pitcher. Hamill had Gene Leake playing in third in place of Strickland, and the new pitcher is right-hander Jim Muscat Grant. Grant is making his 37th appearance. He is 1-9 and lost 7. In 163 innings, he has allowed 136 hits, given up 74 earned runs, an earned run average of 4.08. He has walked 81, struck out 84, given up 21 home runs, made 19 starts for the Indians this season, and he has pitched six complete games. As I think back to it, in the all-important four-game series that the White Sox in Cleveland played here, set the White Sox up in first place in the American League, Muscat Grant, in relief of Jack Hartman, was tagged with the defeat.
as Bob Shaw got the win. That's out of the series sweep. So here is Grant facing John Romano. White Sox lead two to one. First half of the six getting underway. And once again, here's Bob Elson. Thank you, Don. That double play was really, so far, the key play of the game, along with Smith Grove. Here is Romano, and the first pitch to him, a ball a little bit too low. Grant has won nine and lost seven. He has an earned run average of around four, just a couple of points over four. And a fastball right down the middle for a perfect strike. This fellow's very, very fast. He's essentially a fastball pitcher, and he can really blaze that ball in. Remember, Leak is playing third now. And Grant is the pitcher, and he got that pitch a little bit high, a let up. And it's a ball two, and a strike one count. Grant winds again and fires. There's a high fly ball to straight center field. This all going way back near the fence. He's got it right up against the wire. 410 feet away. So John Honey Romano really hit one that time. It sent Pearsall racing back to the remotest corner of Sutter Field, right up against the fence. Sign there says 410, and there's one up. Here's Al Smith. He struck out in the second inning, and he flied out in the fourth inning. Two to one ball game in this big one. Here is Phil Summers now. See what he's motioning to one of the cameramen. One out and nobody on in the top of the sixth inning. And a strike call right across the knee. Milwaukee two, Pittsburgh one. Six innings, still nothing up on Los Angeles, St. Louis. Set again, and they pitched the study, a swing and a chopper foul along the third baseline. Tony Cuccinello grabbed it. Al Smith has had quite a year. He had a big year here in Cleveland a few years ago, and I think in that year he hit more for percentage. But I don't think it was as good a year as he's had this year for the White Sox. He's been tremendous in left field. Fielding and his throwing has been absolutely terrific. And he's made some very big hits. A ball one and a strike two count on Al Smith. The on-deck man is the right fielder, Jim Rivera. Los Angeles scored three in the first on St. Louis. Here's a high, long blast. This may have room. It's going, going, on a home run for Al Smith. So there's a White Owl wallop and a box of White Owl cigars. And Al Smith just kissed that ball out of here, number 16, against his old teammate, the Indians. And the White Sox are leading in this ball game 3-1. to one. That was hit number 6 for the White Sox against 3 for Cleveland. That's what I told you about his hits this year. He's really picked out the spots to get big ones. Here's Jim Rivera. And a fastball is high and away a ball. So the White Sox have gotten that run back. They were leading two to nothing. Cleveland scored a run in the fifth inning. And now the White Sox have it back, and here's a swing at a curveball and a miss. And it's one and one. This has been, Brand is set, here's the pitch again, and a swing and a fly ball to right field, way out, it's going, going, down, 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 a home run. Out 
that home run ball here. Rivera hit the ball not only over the screen, he hit the ball into the stands. There was a terrific poke. And that is only his third home run of the year, but boy, what a spot he picked for that white owl wallop and a box of white owl cigars. The Sox are leading now, four to one in the game. Here's Phillips, they hit into left field. Uh, base hit, Minoko wheels that ball back in. Now they're getting a pitcher throwing hurriedly out there in the bullpen as the White Sox are really jumping on much cash land. That is the third hit in a row here off of Grant. And I believe it's Gary Bell who started the throw out there now. After getting the first man out, Smith pulled one over the left field screen. Rivera hit one over the screen and into the stands. His drive must have gone 430 feet. And now the plate umpire is walking out to the plate to see what this delay is all about. Phillips single to center field for, or to left field for his second hit of the game. And the White Sox now have eight hits. Cleveland has three. Here is the third base coach, Cuccinello, coming down the line to talk with early win. One out. And it's a four to one ball game. Here is early win stepping in, a switch hitter. He's going to bat left handed. Last time up, he hit a ball very hard, but he lined out to power. Now we have a man on first with one out and two runs in. Pitch to win, low and outside. He looks like he had intentions of bunting. And it's ball one. Early Wynn has been a good hitter all of his career. Cleveland, he was used very frequently as a pinch hitter. Grant ready again, and a nice one across the knees. White call. in the top of the sixth inning. White Sox now with a fairly comfortable lead. It's four to one. And again, Cuccinello wants to talk with Wynn. Phillips standing right on the bag now at first base. Here's Wynn stepping across the plate to the first base side. The outfield is playing straight away. Peg over to first. Phillips goes back in head first. Francona claimed he had his foot in between the bag and Phillips' hand, but the umpire says, well, part of his hand was over your foot, and he touched it in time, and he's safe. When grounds one to the shortstop near second base, over to second out, Turn, fires, safe, no double play. There was a ground ball, a very high chopper near second base, and Hell would probably have been better off if he made that play unassisted and fired. I think he would have had the double play. Held is really an outfielder by trade, and he's done an acceptable job in the infield playing short and third. But there, I think there was a mental miscalculation. Had he run to the bag and fired, he was right in line then. I think he would have had the double play. Power had to get the throw, whirl and fire, and when he jumped up into the air, he didn't have any speed back of that throw, and Wynn beat the double play. Now here's Aparicio. He's at two in a row. Swing, line drive off the third baseman, Leak Slove. He's going to throw to second base, and a force out leaks to power. They got a fourth out at second base. The third baseman leaked to the second baseman power. And they got that ball there just in time for that play. And in the inning, the top of the six, White Sox get two runs. There were three hits and one man left 
on the base. Still fans, at the end of the first half of the sixth inning here at Cleveland tonight in the big one, it's the White Sox, four runs, eight hits, one error. Cleveland, one run, three hits, and no errors. The St. Louis Cardinals scored four in the first inning. We have a new catcher now, Earl Batty. Has come out the scene. Early win is getting in his practice throws. Here are the scores quickly. The Yankees, four, Washington, one, in five. Boston three, Baltimore one, five. Detroit beat Kansas City six to four this afternoon. The St. Louis Cardinals and L.A. scored seven runs in the first inning. L.A. got three. Cardinals bounced right back with four. Cincinnati two and the Phillies nothing in the second game. Cubs beat the Giants five to four. Milwaukee leads Pittsburgh two to one. the first baseman, Tito Francona. Earl Batty is catching. Here comes the pitch to Francona. It's a ball outside knee high. Ball one. Francona struck out the first time. Slide out the second time. Getting all set again, and the pitch of swing and a line drive in the center field. This ball is going to drop in, a base hit. There was a line single to center field. That's going to bring up Orestes Minoso. Activity in the Sox bullpen. Bob Shaw started to throw. Here's Minoso. He was hit with a pitch ball in the second inning, and he was out on the fly ball to deep center field the second time up. And a ball gets away from the catcher, but the runner at first base was not running. The ball only rolled off about eight or nine feet to the right of the plate. So by that time, it was too late for Francona to start to move. Well, this has been a fabulous year, hasn't it? All these White Sox, these one-run games, all this excitement. Man, we've really had a terrific time. And this is the big one. This is for all the marbles here tonight. Manosto the batter. The teammate at first. And Minnie takes a high pitch outside. Ball two. Now, when is what you call a spot pitcher? He pitches the spot. When he has his control, he can hit those spots. He can make those hitters hit his pitch rather than the pitch they want. Some pitchers stand out there and throw the ball down there just to try to get it in the strike zone, but not win. Here's a swing and a long fly ball. It's going to be caught by Smith right up against the wire, one away. was a long drive into left field. Smith backed up against that eight-foot wire fence we told you about and caught it. One away. That's going to bring up the catcher, Russ Nixon. He's at one for two. White Sox have made eight hits. Cleveland has made four hits. White Sox have made four runs. Cleveland has made one run. a stocky left-handed hitter he was on the injury list for a while he was lost to Cleveland for about a month man on first and a ball just off the corner knee high ball one early win has gone all the way against Perry and Grant And the pitch to Nixon, a swing and a ground ball. It's a hit in the right field. Here's the runner trying for third, a long throw, cut off by Aparicio. Cleveland runners on first and third. That's 
pit number pit number five is going to bring up Calavito. Calavito's been up twice. He's slid out twice. Now a lot of excitement here again as the Indians threaten. Aparicio walks into the pitcher's circle. Flips the ball to the pitcher early win. Shaw continues to throw hurriedly out there in the bullpen in left field. Milwaukee has increased their lead over Pittsburgh to 5-1. to one. Well, The Braves really moving up. Here are the White Sox out in front, 4-1. to one. The Giants lost. The Los Angeles Dodgers are losing 4-3. to three. Here's Rocky Colavito. And the first pitch to him, right call, right across the middle. that the White Sox are where they are is because of their ability to beat Cleveland. They're 14 and 7 against this ball club. 14 and 7. Their record against the league 77-52. This is record against the league 80-48. And a swing and a miss. So Calavito in the hole with two strikes on him in a hurry. The on-deck man is the shortstop held. Stop up have done a terrific job in all these Cleveland games. They're working on Calavito. They've really got a good book on him. And I guess uh, Al Lopez, the manager of the White Sox and the former manager of Cleveland, really had a good book for his pitchers on Calavito. Of course, these kind of free swingers are dangerous. You never can tell. The two-strike count on Rocky Colavito. And the pitch to him, a ball. It's up around his head. He fell away from the plate. And it's a ball, one in the strike, two count. The outfield is playing Colavito as you'd expect, deep. After all, he has over 100 runs batted in. He has 41 home runs. Got to respect a fellow like that. Win set again. Here's the pitch to Calavito, a bouncing ball foul. Goodman grabs it in foul territory, and it's a one and two count. The wind continues to work hard on Calavito here in this bottom of the sixth inning with the White Sox leading four to one in this very big game. in the on-deck circle. To the right of the plate is Woody Howes. Rocky Colavito. Stepping back into the batter's box, he has a small or rather short stride in there. His feet are fairly close together. And his stance got his feet right in fairly close. He's wearing a red six on the back of his uniform. He's watching early win. He's waiting for this big pitch. Here it comes. Ball. It's up high and outside. So this game has been loaded with suspense. A lot of excitement. Some terrific plays. Hit. White Sox speed. For example, speaking of White Sox speed as compared to this Cleveland ball club, Cleveland has stolen 31 bases. The White Sox have 108. Just one little item in comparison of these two clubs. And that overall speed that's there shows up in many, many ways outside of stolen bases. Ball two and strike two to Colavito. A swing and a high fly ball. It's fairly deep, but it should be caught. And the center fielder's got it. Here's the run scoring from third. And we have a 4-2 to two game. So Calavito got a ball up in the air, but Phillips got to it in left center and caught it. And we have a 4-2 to two score with a runner at first, Hell coming up, and Lopez is coming out. And this could be just a 
a walkout there for a discussion with Wynn. This coming out this time does not necessarily mean he's going to take him out. But somebody thinks they are because the car is moving out there. So maybe they know something that we don't. Yep, they're going to take him out. Here's early wind coming out. Now the photographers are busy, about eight or nine of them, getting pictures of early win as he walks out and tipping his cap, a great veteran, one of the greatest competitors in baseball, certainly one of the greatest campaigners and competitors in my years of being associated with baseball, and a fellow for whom I have a tremendous amount of admiration. So Al Lopez who's done a terrific job with this pitching staff this year. Figures that maybe when is a little bit tired out, Calavito pulled that ball a long way, and he's going to bring in. And Minoso also hit one to the wire. He's going to bring in a fresh pitcher, and quite a pitcher he is, Bob Shaw. Don, what do you have there on Shaw? Well, first of all, Bob, I go along with everything you said about when the great and third competitor that he is. Can't have a change still behind the plate. Sherm Lawler is going to do the catching now. Popped up hand and all. Sherm is a... Boy, what a workman he is. He's coming in behind the plate as Shaw arrives on the mound. Bob is making his 49th game appearance. He has started 25 games. He has finished up 12 in relief, 117 and lost six. In 223 innings, he has allowed 205 hits, given up 68 turned runs, struck out 88, walked 54, allowed 15 homers, and his earned run average is 2.74. Now, let's say one of you here, of course, is to have Shaw use that good sinker that he has against this Cleveland power. Try to keep him on the ground, not let him get that ball in the air. And at the same time, with Shaw working in these in these innings and coming in at this stage of the game in the sixth inning, that, of course, enables manager Al Lopez then to keep both Staley and Lown in readiness then for the final innings of this game to work them over a shorter uh, space, over a shorter distance. So Shaw is coming in here to replace early win to pitch. And his battery mate, Sherm Lawler, once again, here's Bob. Here is what he held. He was originally the property of the New York Yankees. He went to the Kansas City Ball Club from New York in one of the many deals between those two clubs. Here's a slider across the knees for a called strike, and the batter didn't like it. He then came over to Cleveland in the Roger Maris deal. He was one of the players that came over here along with power in that deal. So Woody Held is the batter with a man on first base and a run in. And a he started to call out a strike but changed his mind. The umpire, Summers, started his right hand up but held it. And it's one and one. Now the umpire... I'll say this for them. By and large, they do a great job, and they're under as much strain as the ball players are. A ball one and a strike one count. A man on first. Held grounds one to third. Goodman's got it. Going to second with the ball, and the runner sliding in there with fourth, retiring the side. So that play, third to second, fourth Nixon. And in the inning, one run, two hits, a sacrifice fly, and one man left on the bench. So fans, at the end of six full innings of play in this ball game at Cleveland, Bob Elson with Don Wells, it's the White Sox, four runs, eight hits, one error, Cleveland, two runs, five hits, and no error. Los Angeles and St. Louis are tied at four and four at the end of two innings. We have a new pitcher. It's Bell, Gary Bell. Bell is the second leading winner on the Cleveland staff with 16 and 11. He has an earned run average of 3.94. He's worked 228 innings, given up 200 hits, 102 runs, of which 100 were scored, 
103 walks, 133 strikeouts. He leads this ball club in throwing home run balls. He has thrown 28. Now we're going into the top of the seventh. The score is four to two, and the White Sox lead in the big one. Here is Fox. He walked once. He's 0 for two, and he's facing a right-hander, Bell. Hashman is throwing in the bullpen for Cleveland. Here's a running run attempt that's fouled all the way. Let's get a station break in. This is the WCFL Chicago White Sox Baseball Network. So Nelly Fox takes. Now has a ball one and a strike one count on him. And here's a high one in close, a ball. leading off against right-hander Gary Bell. Perry, Grant, and Bell. For the White Sox, Wynn, and Shaw. And the pitch to Fox, they swing a shallow fly to left, and Oso's playing at right, he's got it. Usher. That's going to bring up Billy Goodman. Now, Billy Goodman is a frail sort of a fellow. He's not the type of fellow that, well, can play 154 ball games. But, boy, he's really put out this year. He's really been a big help in this pennant drive. You can say that about every member on the club. This has been a tremendous team effort. Here's a ball that's low. Every fellow that gets in there does his bit. And there's a great spirit on this ball club, and certainly credit for that is due to manager Al Lopez and his coaching staff. Goodman looks at a good one, right across the knees, tight call, one and one. Fell into the motion again, and a strike, same spot. He's worked a good slider twice across the knees on the one and two. One out and nobody on, and the pitch to him a little bit low and in close, a ball, two and two, ball two strikes it. Goodman, left-hand hitter, and a swing and a ground ball right at par. Goes to one knee, up of the ball to pick, the batter's up. That's going to bring up the first baseman, Kwiatkowski. 0 for 2, he walked once. He was the recipient of an intentional pass in the third. Big clue. And he cuts on one and gets it up in the air in the infield. Here's the first baseman coming down the line. Francona caught that ball in foul territory. He came two-thirds of the way from first to the plate. Caught the ball about four feet foul. And it retires the start. So in the inning, the top of the seven, three up and three down. No runs, no hits, no errors. The crowd standing now for the seventh inning stretch. And at the end of the first half of the seventh, and the familiar take me out to the ball game is being played, and the, sorry to say, the man who wrote that song died about three or four weeks ago. Take me out to the ball game, and has certainly been associated with baseball, this great American sport, for a generation. At the end of the first half of the seventh, the score, the White Sox four, Cleveland two. Bubba Phillips has come in the infield to play third. Lawler's catching. 
And Elmer Vallo has been in this game of baseball a long time. A left-handed pinch hitter is coming out to face short. Here are the totals at this point. White Sox, four runs, eight hits, one error. Cleveland, two runs, five hits, no error. Here's Elmer Vallo, a left-hand hitter in the batter's box, and a ball is wide. Milwaukee leading 5-1 in the eighth. The Dodgers and St. Louis are tied 4-4 four and four in the third. Dallow looks to tie a ball. Ball two. Those are the other, those are the National League teams in contention. As you know, the Giants lost, Milwaukee's winning, and the Dodgers are tied. Here the Sox are leading 4-2, to two, Cleveland batting in the bottom of the seventh. And a nice one across the letters, by call. Shaw has come a long way in a year's time. He set again in the pitch to Vallo. A swing and a foul is coming back here and is going out of play. Elmer Vallo is batting for Lee. third baseman and a ball two and a strike two count and a little tap along the third baseline put a stop of that ball the pegs are first he's out he dove for the bag trying to get in there in time and he tripped over it but he was out one away is coming out to bat for the pitcher and Harshman will stay in the game as the Cleveland pitcher. Now batting for Bell, number 23, Jack Harshman. Jack Harshman has eight hits in 48 trips. And a batting average of 167. Harshman, a left-hand hitter. And a swing and a foul tip. He was picked up more or less as a gamble by the Indians about a month ago. And he's done a good job for them. He has won seven games and lost ten. But he had, he had lost most of those games while with the Baltimore club. Here's a ball, one and one. We're in the last of the seven. White Sox four, Cleveland two. Big right-hander Bob Shaw set again. Swing and a tap for the first baseman. Clue on a big hop, an easy play. The run to the bag and an unassisted out. That's going to bring up Terso. He's had one for three and a run batted in. So Bob Shaw has the boys hitting that ball into the dirt. stepping in. He was our guest on the dugout show tonight. Six children and one on the way. Oh, he has quite a family. Recovered from a serious nervous breakdown of a few years ago. And here's a hit right through the box. Almost took a leg off his jaw. Herschel slapped that ball right through the box. Going to bring up power. <laughs> a 
When Powers, a dangerous type of hitter, the fellow on whom the White Sox pitching staff, like they have on Colavito, have done a good job. In the last 10 games, he had one big hit against the Sox. That was in Chicago when he won a game with a long double into right center field and sent the winning run across. Here's a swing and a miss at a very fast pitch that was down low. Power like Minoso likes to hit that ball into right center field. He likes to get that ball over the second baseman's head. Here's Shaw at first. Power cuts and bounces one near second. Fox knocks it down, can't make a play. They hit. Raced in, tried to make a backhand scoop pickup of that ball off the hop and couldn't come up with the ball at the hit. And it's going to bring up Francona. That was a tough chance. If he let the ball go behind second base it would have been too late to get anybody this way by going through the ball he had a chance now the pitch to Francona swing he tried to hold up too late the jaw threw him a sinker that was right down on his feet and it's strike one so Cleveland battling here they have runners at second and at first and Tito Francona is the batter Shaw is getting ready again. Swing and a miss. The main pitch got him with a very effective sinker. And it's two strikes. Shaw's pitch really, really takes off. And a two strike count on Francona. And he's ready. Here's the ground ball to Fox the ball, forced the first out, retiring the stuff. Fox bobbled that ball, but recovered in time to throw Francona out, and it retires the side, and two men were left down the base. So in the bottom of the seventh, no run, two hits, two men were left. And at the end of seven full innings of play, seven complete innings, here are the totals, the White Sox, four runs, eight hits, one error, Cleveland, two runs, seven hits, and no errors. Let's take a look at the scores while Harshman is throwing. Milwaukee, five, Pittsburgh, one. That came in the eighth. Cubs beat the Giants, five to four. Cincinnati leads the Phillies 2-1 to one in the 6th. Los Angeles and St. Louis are tied 4-4 four four in the 3rd. Both of the starting pitchers were knocked out. The Yankees lead Washington 5-4 in the 6th. Boston leads Baltimore 4-3 in the 7th. And the Tigers beat Kansas City this afternoon 6-4. In that game, Keene hit a 3-run home. Great attendance tonight, 54,293. Now the White Sox are leading 4-2, to two, and if they can just hold it, they will win the pennant tonight and make millions of people happy, including Don and myself. This has been Tom Paul, and we'll have a broadcast from down in the dressing room when the game is over, where you can hear all the the bedlam and the noise and everything, and we'll also have a broadcast at Midway when the plane gets in at Chicago tonight. Uh, they're doing it at 12.30 to call the time. Here's Lawler. And a ball. This, as I said, is all contingent on the Sox winning this ball game. They're leading now at the end of seven, four to two.
Jack Harshman, the fourth pitcher, and a line drive that the third baseman grab. Max is playing third now, one up. So it's Baxter at third. That's the third third baseman they've had tonight. Strickland, Leak, and Baxter. Here's Al Smith, who's had one hit tonight, and it was a uh, honey. A home run way over the screen in left field in the sixth inning, followed by Rivera. So they came back to back. And they pitched. Eddie Short, who's been one of the busiest men in Chicago with, with the impending series, got here late today. He's, like everybody else, we're all on edge here. Here's a swing and a ground ball hit to Short. Here's Hell with a long peg. He's out. Nice play by Woody Hall. That's going to bring up Rivera. One hit, a home run. Sox are leading four to two, eight hits to seven hits. And lefty Jack Hodgman is ready again. Here's a swing and a ground ball. How can't get it? A hit for Rivera into left field. That's hit number nine for the White Sox. Cleveland with seven. And it's going to bring up little Bubba Phillips, who's had two hits tonight. He's now playing third, and early in the ball game, he made a great catch on Minoso in deep right center field. Here is Phillips in the batter's box, and he hits a shallow fly ball in left field. Minoso coming in, but the shortstop calling for the ball held has it to fire in the front. In the inning, no run, one hit, one left. At the end of the first half of the eighth inning, Bob Elson with Don Wells at Cleveland. White Sox, four runs, nine hits, one error. Cleveland, two runs, seven hits, and no run. lead off, Minoso facing Bob Shaw and a ground ball to deep short here's a long play safe they throw Paul Kluzuski to the foul truck side of the bag and it's going to be scored as a hit Aparicio made a fabulous play on the ball hit for Minoso, and with Aparicio went into the hole, way to his right, backhanded that ball, and on a fast man like Minoso, missed getting him by an eyelash. Here's Russ Nixon. Docs have two pitchers throwing, Cleveland has two pitchers throwing. Ready. Here's the ground ball. Could be a double play ball. Over the second base out, over the first base out. It is a double play. There was a big one. We go back on this ball game after you study the play by play. This situation right here, that double play, could also be one of the key plays of this tremendous game. Leading four to two, one out in the last of the eighth. I'm going to take leave of you at the end of this eighth inning and go downstairs and get down, step down there with our broadcast and our engineer down there in the White Star Clubhouse, and Don will do the ninth, and he'll hurry down to be in on the party. But it should be something down there when this game is over. Alavito takes the ball low. 
White Sox are leading 4-2 to two in the last of the eighth. Here's the pitch. Swing. Tipped that ball. Lawler held it. And it's 1-1. One and one. Sox have used three catchers tonight. Cleveland has used three third basemen. We're way up here in the upper deck. And it's a long haul down there to the dressing room, but we should certainly make it before the end of the game. And a pitch just missed at the knees for a ball, two and one. St. Louis, nine. The Dodgers, six. Talk about a crazy ball game. Fifteen runs have been scored in three innings of St. Louis. And the Dodgers really pasting, or the Cardinals, those Dodger pitchers. Here's a bouncing ball. I hop it to Louis. Got the ball. Let's it go. Out. And it retires the tie. So that's it in the eighth. No run. One hit doubled up. And no one left on the base. So this is Bob Elson saying goodbye for a while. And I'll be talking to you from the dressing room. And I certainly hope that nothing will happen to change the picture here in the ninth inning. And Don will tell you about the ninth, and at the end of eight innings, White Sox, four runs, nine hits, one error. Cleveland, two runs, eight hits, no error. And the pitcher, Bob Shaw, comes out to face left-handed Jack Hartman, who was the fourth pitcher used by manager Joe Gordon tonight. Perry started things off. Then Mudcat Grant, then Gary Bell, now Hartman. Jack allowed one head in the eighth inning. This is the first time at the plate for Shaw. Then taking over for early win. Start will be Shaw, Aparicio, and Fox. The outfield straight away and not too deep. Count will beat up here, Tom and Oso. Fox is playing here third. He's almost even with the back at third. Step behind it. Now moves up a bit more. Here's the motion, and they pitch to Bob. And of a bunting stance, bluff the bunt. And took a strike. Nothing in one. So we can go away with a magic number if all goes well in what remains of this game tonight. And the best shot takes low and close, even up at one and one. Brian Tone at first, Rick Power at second, Woody held it short. Those positions have remained unchanged tonight. The White Sox have nine hits, the Indians to manage eight. Here's the pitch swung on, a high foul. No play on this ball. Drifting, drifting, going out of play. Into the aisle, just beyond the Cleveland duck, out of the first base side, and the count is one and two. Well, let's get on the station break here. Let all of our network stations identify themselves. This is the WCFL, Chicago White Sox Baseball Network. Here's a swing and a fat foul by Shaw. Tried to hold up on his swing. Got a piece of that pitch and fouled it to the left side. So the count is still one and two. Ray Aparicio has two hits tonight in four tries, and the little guy will be up there next. Marshman, the lefty, rocks a couple of times, hesitating out there. Now the pitch, Shaw swings, there's another pop foul down the first base side, going to be out of play. Drops about a row deep. And off the hands of the spectator there, and then back out toward the playing field. by Hartman and the pitch. Bobby held up on his plane. Just about went reaching. Hartman took a couple of strides down off the mound. Started the play to question Bill Summers' call. But the count is even two and two. Delivery for the 2 2 pitch. Curveball outside, ball three, and it's the full one on Josh Williamson. So with 3 2 on Shaw, it was a pitch by Hartman. On the inside pitch, is playing it a foul. Back and out of play, up into the photographer's rack. That hangs 
from the upper deck, well off to our right. So it's still the three two count. Well, the Braves down the Pirates, and the Cubs beat the Giants. And the Santa Cruz Cardinals lead the Dodgers nine to six. Aprici on the on deck circle here. Here's Parkman getting ready, and they preach it to be all over again. Such great call, bullseye right down the middle. So Shaw is called out on strike. Here's Aparicio. He popped out of the first inning, doubled in the third, and singled in the fifth. Then he hit him into a fourth play in the sixth. Parkman gets his first strikeout. Sox have been out in front all the way, waiting 4-2 to two here in the ninth inning. Louis waiting, and the pitch to left. That call. Good serve, just above the knees. You might get nothing in one. Hartman out of the cap off, mopping away some of the perspiration. Conavito scouted up in right field, playing straight away. And this on not too deep. In straight away center field, a pitch to Louis over the plate, but low, and it's even at one and one. The White Sox picked up two in the third, and came back on back-to-back -back homers in the sixth for a pair, and they lead the Indians four to two. The pitch to Aparicio, swing and a miss. Marston had him a good one that time, and took something off that curveball, and Aparicio was way out in front of the pitch. One of the luckiest cuts I've ever seen Louis take. One and two counts. One out with not on. And the pitch down. Louis swings the tap off of the third base side. Back to top to Harry. Fires low and it's out at first. Pat Turner stuck that glove down. Made a good pickup of a low throw by Baxter. As he knew he had to fire that ball in a hurry. He got the speedy little guy and he erased him. Third to first. There was a real photo finish at first. Now with two gone, here's Nelson Fox. Here to me is the most valuable player in the American League. He would certainly get my vote. There are others, of course, worthy of tremendous consideration on this team. And one of them, of course, the starting pitcher for the White Sox tonight, early win. Great play of Aparicio. The great play of Landis. Two gone. Here's Nelson Fox. Here to me is the most valuable player in the American League. He would certainly get my vote. There are others, of course, worthy of tremendous consideration on this team, and one of them, of course, the starting pitcher for the White Sox tonight, early win. Great play of Aparicio, the great play of Landis, of Smith, of so many others you can name. There's a swing of the ball, twice to left field. Manasso back, 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 and coming near the line, takes it in. So that retires the side. Three up and three down. So this is it. From this warm summer night on the shores of Lake Erie at Municipal City, and this will be at Cleveland's last cast in their half of the night. Nothing across for the White Sox. Scoring the totals at the end of the first half of the ninth inning. The White Sox, four runs, nine hits, and one error. The Indians, two runs, eight hits, and no errors. How nervous you are. Here's Woody Hell leading up. Strike called in the first pitch by Shaw. Nothing can watch. I'm just as nervous as a cat. Here's the motion down the pitch by Shaw. Here's a swing and a high pop up at the first base side. Foxy, though, drifting out for this ball. Back, shot over the right field. He's out of it now. He's got it. That is out number one. Went away here at Cleveland. Here's Jim Baxter. Coming up now. The eighth man of the Cleveland batting order. One down with nobody on in the last half of the ninth inning. White Sox two outs away from their first pennant. In a span of 40 years. Dating back to 1919. So let's see what happens. Here's the pitch. Strike call. Bullseye by Shaw. Now they're going to run on back. This is a right-handed hitter. Wide spread stand. One down. Shaw into the motion again. The lineup and the pitch. 
Here's a swing and a miss for strike two, and it's nothing and two. Bobby with that sinker that you could roll right off the edge of a table, and Max is what reaching for it, two strikes. So this is the moment right now we've all been waiting for all season long. The big climax of this 59 cent race. The pitch outside to him at the waist, one and two. The outfield, Smith in left field. Jim Landis out in center field. They didn't plan to use Landis until the weekend series at Detroit, but he was eager to play. He wanted his spot back in center field. Well, they're out and right. They're straight away. Here's the motion and the pitch down to Baxter's out in the dirt in front of the plate. And it's an even up count, two and two. Bubba Phillips at third, Aparicio at short, Fox at second, and Ted Kluzewski at first. We will feed the proceeding from the White Sox clubhouse, of course, to all of our network stations tonight. So let's hang on. Let's get him two more here as Bob goes into the motion, and here's the 2-2 delivery. A swing. He went reaching. There's a foul. Rips back into the upper deck to our right. And it's even up two and two. The United Airlines charter will arrive at the National Guard hangar on 63rd Street. That is the information we have. White Sox charter, whatever time it arrives in Chicago. We're not too sure of that. Here's the motion and they pitch it. That's a swing and smash off Charles Love. Fox picks it up, goes to Lurie, but there's no chance for Aparicio then to try to get the throw away to first. Baxter comes up with a base hit. That will bring up Harshman. That was a ground ball. After it had passed, and Shaw flicked at it with his glove, but dropped in on the dirt surface of the infield back of second, and Fox raced over to his right. Made a good backhand stab, and he knew that the only possibility they had then was for Fox to try to get that ball to Louie and for Louie to make the throw to first. But by the time Aparicio got it, there was no chance to get back to it, and he is on with an infield hit. Here is Hartman. We'll have a runner now for Baxter. Webster goes in to run for him. This is Webster. So Ray Webster in to run now for Baxter. The batter is Hartman. Been up there one time in the seventh inning when he tapped out to Klazuski, the first baseman. That's taken by Shaw. Here's the pitch out of Hartman. A swing and a ground foul on the first base side for strike one. One away, one strike on Hartsman, last half of the ninth inning. White Sox lead, four to two. These two teams are even up nine hits apiece. Then one error in the game, that charge to the White Sox, and it didn't hurt a bit. And the motion and the pitch to Hartsman, and it's low and outside, even up now at one and one. ball and one strike. One out. Webster running for Baxter after his infield hit is on there at first. The outfield skated around to the right. Here's the motion and the pitch. It is outside. Ball two. The make it two and one. Activity going in the White Sox bullpen. And Sir Clown is throwing. Jerry Saley is throwing. One down. Runner at first base, Hartman flips that batter out a couple of times. The left-handed hitter, the motion, and the pitch is playing. They hit right field. There's a pickup made by Rivera out there. They're running to first and second base, but only one out. Late strike by Webster from first. On that hit by Hartman into right field. That brings up Pearsall with the tying run on at first. Tying run for Cleveland is on at first base. Here at first round, he has two hits and four tries. One of the base hits on Bob Shaw, right back through the box in the seventh inning. Marshman is coming out. We'll have a runner for him. This will be Cal Hardy now. So we have two bench runners on in the Cleveland half of the ninth inning, and Pearsall stepping into the batter's box. 
popped out of the first inning. Five is set up in the third. Singled Harper right in the fifth. He's singled again in the seventh. And the on-deck man is Dick Power. So Bob Shaw and a spot here with only one out of the last half of the ninth. And a Cleveland uprising going. White Sox lead, four to two. Webster away to his lead at second base. Hardy steps off the bag at first. Back up on the steps. There's Dollars waiting there at the plate. There's the set taken by Shaw. Here's the pitch on the way now. Strike call. Nothing at one. Tap the curve. He's playing the waist down the letters. 0-1. Oh Getting a sign from Lawler. He's ready now. The look toward the lead man at second base. And the pitch is on the way. Down to Lopez. Even up in one and one. Lawler thought he had a good pitch. So did Shaw. But that sinker dropped too far out of the strike zone. So it's leveled off. One ball to one strike. Lawler up and down. Lawler has a good pitch. Lawler has a good pitch. Lawler has a good pitch. Lawler the White Sox need that good sinker by Shaw now to try to get first all on the ground. Set up a possibility of a double play. Here's the 1-1 one -one delivery to him now. Swing and a smash to Fox. Fox is moving. Fox is moving. Oh, they're going to hold the bases loaded. Nice to Fox and glanced up his knee and went down to the right field. The bases are loaded for the Indians. And the batter will be Vic Power. It's a base hit. And here comes manager Al Lopez out of the dugout. That will be all for Shaw. Straight hits off job. Two of them. Left break for him. What an infield hit. This one a hot smash to Fox. As he went down for it and glanced up his knee, it was really a hot shot at him and a gross shot of the right field. They kept the bases loaded. And we'll have a new picture coming on. Jerry Staley, number 21, coming out of the bullpen. Manager Al Lopez patting Shaw on the back. Still only one out, last time to the ninth inning. So Webster is on at third. Hardy at second base. First all is on at first. The batter will be Vic Carr. He has one hit in four tries. Singled in the seventh inning. He passed into the double play in the fifth inning. Popped out of the third and tied out of the first. Here comes the station wagon there now with a new pitcher. Fox is out there at the mound. So is Lauder. Tough break for the White Sox and a real hot shot. Low, well sun line drive. Almost at the feet of Fox. And a real tough chance for the mighty might. It split it off his knee as it came up to him. And rebounded Scalabin right field. Webster was held at third by Georgia White. Didn't want to risk any play at the plate on him, as Rivera made a quick pickup in right field. Here comes Jerry Finney now. He stepped out of the station wagon, walked, walking across the foul line. The manager, Al Lopez, out there, puts the ball in his mitt. Finney looks around, checks the whole infield setup. He's coming on here with the bases loaded and only one out. <laughs> The announcement made for Sally. Sally is appearing in his 65th ball game. He has finished up 35, won eight and lost four, worked in 113 innings, given up 108 hits, 27 earned runs, struck out 53, walked 22. His earned run average, 2.15. He's working in his throws here to Lawler. The bases are loaded behind him. Only one out. As Shaw got the first man he faced, Woody Hell, the pop out to Fox. Then came the infield hit by Baxter. Webster went in to run for him. Then came the line single by Hartman to right field. Hardy went in to run for him. And then came the base hit by Pearsall. Smash to Fox. Lapped off his leg and went in. Shot of a right field. Tito Francona is also up there at the plate watching Sally with his warm-up throws. He is the on-deck man. Here's Vic Power stepping in. <laughs> the noise will be deafening now at Municipal Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio. 
We're in the ninth half of the ninth inning. The White Sox lead four to two. One out. Bases are loaded, and Staley is ready to work out of the power. Power one for four. The on deck man, Sam Soda, he is one for four. Power flicks that bat around a couple of times. Staley goes into the windup. Here's the pitch on the way. Power swings ground ball to Roy. Up to the ball, steps on the bag. Fires the first double play. The White Sox win the pennant. The White Sox have won the American League pennant as Aparicio. Picked up that smash by Power. Stepped on the bag at second. Fired to first base and got the third double play of the night. The White Sox. Now, finding Jerry Staley on the back, Aparicio on the back, everybody on the back, and right now, the final score of the ball. German Waller, out of the field, German. Bob, it had to be that way, a double play, the base is over, we played him that way all year. Boy, that was up. Here's Bob Shaw. Bob, how do you feel? I feel wonderful. I was a little bit shaky there for a while, though. Greatest feeling of my life. Here's little Louie. How do you feel, Louie? Good again. It feels good, huh? Boy, I should say so. That was a great double play to wind up the ball game. And the <laughs> Here's John Romano. Come here, Johnny. Here's Johnny Romano. Oh, boy. Oh, it's the greatest thrill of the world. Here's Tony Cuccinello, our fine. Very, very good, Tony. Very good job. Boy, I should say. Everybody's feeling wonderful here. And here's a, just a word from Al Lopez. Al, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. It feels wonderful. Now we've won the pennant. We've won the pennant. Thank you. You've done a great job. Thank you very much. Thank you. Here's Big Clue. How do you feel? Real great. Real great. Right. Thanks. Foxy, don't get away. Here's oh, Fox. How does it feel, Nelly? Great, great. One for it. Here's Jerry Staley. Hi, Bob. Wow. 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 What a feeling, huh? Wow. And here's Sir Clown, who's done a great job all year. My roomie, the best relief pitcher in baseball, got him out. How did that double play ball look? Oh, wonderful. That's well. Here's Chuck Kaminsky. Well, Chuck, congratulations. A long time, Bob. I should say it has. And what a wonderful thrill this has been. What a ball game. Here's Jim Revere. Jim Revere, who got a wonderful double play ball game. Here's Jim Revere, who got a wonderful home run tonight in another hit. Jim, how does it feel to you? Well, Bob, I wasn't nervous at all doing the game, but that last play, I'm nervous as a wreck. I'll bet you were. Thank you, Bob. Here's our trainer, Doc Foley. Doc, how do you feel? Wonderful. What's the magic number? The magic number is gone now. Well, uh, they're all coming in here. I want to get Hank Greenberg, uh, White Sox vice president, to say a word. Oh, that was one of the greatest ball games I've looked at in many, many years. That play of Louis coming up with a clutch play like that. I've never seen a final play. How did it feel to you to win it over here in a town that you were so closely identified with for so many years? Well, naturally, you want to win no matter where you are. And, of course, I have no feeling about Cleveland than I have about any other club in the league. I'm just delighted that Al Lopez and the boys who have really done a magnificent job this year, real start on this club. Uh, the boys played together and, you know, winning these close games the way they have, they've come up with the key play whenever they need it. And coming over here, playing right here in Cleveland where they had to win this ball game, I think they've shown a tremendous amount of courage and everybody in Chicago should rightfully be proud of them. Well, they certainly are. And I'd like to pass along our congratulations to President Bill Vick, where he may be listening in Bloomington. Well, uh, Bill, Bill had to make a speech, as you know, Bob, and he'll be at the airport, though, and I know that he's overjoyed because uh, as much as the players have worked for this pennant this year, why, uh, Bill's worked just as hard in the front office as they have. He deserves a lot of congratulations for the fine showing of the team this year. Thank you very much, Hank. Uh, that was Vice President Hank Greenberg, and we want to send our good wishes we have Chuck Comiskey here and the Bill Vick and to every member of the White Sox family here's Andy Frayne who's been handling the crowds in baseball for years how does it feel oh Bob this clubhouse is a madhouse what a ball game I've never Andy, seen a ball game you seem to have a lot of your crew down here your two boys what were you doing here tonight we're down here helping Scotty Maxwell handle this crowd in return, we're going to take 25 of their men to Cleveland. Over uh, to Chicago. For the World Series. For the World Series, that's right. But I've never saw a ball game in all my life like this tonight. And this, this clubhouse at the White Sox is just, uh, they're going crazy here. Well, it's really, uh, really a top thrill. Here's one of the great uh, fellas and one of the great pitchers of baseball. And I was telling you tonight, when he left the game, I've been broadcasting baseball for, well, about as many years as Wynn has been pitching, maybe a few more, 
But what a tremendous admiration I have for this fellow as a competitor and as a gentleman and as a team man. And that's early win. Early, this must be a great thrill for you. Bob, this is one of the greatest thrills I've ever had. I really enjoyed this whole year. And uh, I don't know when I enjoyed the game more than I did tonight, although I think I was more tense than I have been in my life. <laughs> Well, you probably were, and there was certainly justification for it. How did you feel out there? Well, uh, I was getting pretty tired, Bob. Uh, I didn't let up any all night. I didn't throw a change of pace all evening. Everything was just as hard as I could throw. And I figured that when I give out, well, uh, you know, somebody else ready. Now, early, I was saying during the ball game that the White Sox pitching staff has done a terrific job on Calavito and on Big Power. What, are you, what have you tried to do with them? And you've certainly done it so successfully as you did with Calavito tonight. Well, uh, we all know they're uh, good high ball hitters and that's their long ball. They're going to get their base hit. You can't keep them from doing that. But you've got to keep working the ball away from them and get them leaning over the plate and then crowd them once in a while to keep them from leaning all the time. You can't uh, go uh, 100% all the way, Bob. You've got to move the ball around on both of them and uh, you've got to be lucky and do it at the right time. Early, how does this throw tonight compare with the other throws that you've had in baseball? Well, I was just telling uh, Hank Greenberg here, I think this one was much more enjoyable than, than the one we won in 54, because uh, uh, we did it with uh, less power, and we did it with so many close ball games, and uh, we did a lot with our pitching and our defense. I think it was a real thrill to me. Well, I think of all the baseball teams that I've seen, there's a... As wonderful a spirit, if not a better one, on this team than any team I've seen in the majors. I don't think you've asked for a better one. <laughs> it hasn't been just this way in the past few minutes. It's been that way all year, Bob. It certainly has. <laughs> well, early congratulations. I know you're tired, and thank you very much for being with us. Thank you, Bob. I want to get Bob Shaw. Bob, come here a minute. Bob Shaw has done a terrific job this year. Uh, he and Early Wynn have been uh, in games one, the leaders on the staff, and I was saying uh, toward the latter part of the broadcast when you were working, Bob, that you're about 100% improved pitcher over last year. How do you account for the big difference? Well, Bob, uh, the one thing that really helps you is uh, when you play uh, for a guy like Al Lopez, he gives you tremendous confidence. Plus the fact that uh, with him and Barry and Wynn and a few of the other guys, uh, they have been able to uh, teach me some of the fundamentals, and uh, I worked on them hard this winter. And of course, just having the opportunity to pitch regularly is another asset. But uh, also playing for a defensive ball club like we have, uh, they seem to take you out of a lot of tough uh, situations. Uh, they, I say it's a matter of all the things combined, and uh, for myself, I'm just happy that I could do the job. Uh, I hope that uh, we've uh, well, certainly done a great job, and I know you'll do a great job in the World Series. Thank you, Bob. I want to talk to Barry Latman a minute. Here's a young fellow, a young big guy that came up with the White Sox, and while he hasn't won 20 ball games, he's won some big ones, and this fellow looks like he's destined to be one of the great pitchers in the next few years. How does it feel, Barry? Bob, we're really living high tonight. We're really living tonight. That's all we can say about it. It's the greatest thing that's ever happened. Well, it certainly is. One of the all-time great thrills. Tanner Mooney was broken loose here. I guess everybody can hear it right now. Here's George Smith walking right back. Here's one of our great pitchers, one of our great left handers, and I know what this means to this guy because he's pitched wonderful balls for losing teams as well as winning teams. Billy, how do you feel? Oh, Bob, there's never anything like this. This is great. And just like all year, the boys played the same type of ball game, and Jerry Clear had one pitch. It was just great. It's hard to even talk about it. Because right. we, we were down here in the clubhouse in the ninth inning. What kind of a ball was it that Power hit? Was that a good shot that to Louis? It was a great ball. I don't know what it was. I was warming up. I was going to pitch to Francona. I don't know. It was a, the greatest ball we ever had pitched for us in the White Sox, as far as I know. <laughs> it was great, Bob. Billy, now your own trouble has been bothering you lately. How do you feel now? You I feel very good, Bob. Real good. Just, just a couple days off here, and you will be in very good shape. Well, we can all use that, and then you'll be ready for the world. Yeah, Billy, that's right, Bob. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Billy, I want to just uh, talk with Nelson Fox here for a minute, who's one of the greatest ball players in baseball, and this guy typifies what this White Sox team means. Tell me, this must be your greatest thrill in baseball. Yes, it is, Bob. It's just wonderful. There's no words that uh, can... Uh, oh, you can hear it in the clubhouse there. It's just wonderful. A win, Shaw, and uh, Stanley done a terrific job. Lily done a great job. 
Uh, Lopez, I think, done a great job with what he had to work with. And you had 25 ball players that was out there hustling every day and trying to win. We got a hungry bunch here. And, uh, and, uh, as I said, uh, Lopez, we were, we were, we were here in the clubhouse. Did Aparicio feed you that ball? The uh, no, I didn't. He said the ball was hit about two. No, no. I just want to get, uh, I want to get the fine president of the American League, Joe Cronin, to say it. Wasn't that a great game, Bob? It was a great game, and it's been a great season. Typical of the White Sox, right, right down on the West Sox. I think that every baseball fan in the country is happy about this. I would say so. The White Sox is this year really are deserving of the pennant. Well, I'm sure you're very happy about it. Oh, I'm very pleased. Now we've got to win the series. That's right. Thank you very much, Mr. Cronin. That was Joe Cronin the uh, president of the American League and a uh, fellow who's going to do quite a job in that capacity. I want to talk to Dick Donovan. Dick Donovan is coming over this way. Dick, uh, how does this feel to you? It feels pretty good, Bob. You said a shave. Yeah. You, uh, you got uh, down here with uh, a this is about what you say. Your biggest thrill in baseball? Oh, by far, Bob. This is the biggest thrill he ever has. This is no. the world being tremendous. No. The bus leaves in 15 minutes, you know, so we better get going. Well, uh, I want to ask you one thing. What about your own physical condition? Are you all set for the series? I'm all set for the series, Bob. I'm all set for anything. You're all set. I sure am. Fine, Dick. Thank you very much. That was Dick Donovan. Here's little Louie, the greatest shortstop that ever lived for my money, and I've seen a lot of them. Louie, how does it feel, boy? Well, I can see when he hit it. <laughs> well, what about that last ball power hit you? Did you know it was a double play ball? Well, it's the best place I, I never would be made in my life. You were sure that that was going to be it, huh? Well, I tried for the ball, and uh, the soon I get the ball in the glove, I know I'm going to make a double play. <laughs> Well, that's well, Louie. Congratulations. That's the last half of the night for the White Sox lead 4-2. One out, bases are loaded, and Staley is ready to work out of the power. Our one for four. The on-deck man, Sam Keller, he is one for four. Power puts that batter out a couple of times. Staley goes into the lineup. Here's the pitch on the way. Power swings, grabs all the way. Power up to the ball, slips on the bag, and fires the first double play. Well, the White Sox have won the World Series. Well, they have picked up that smash by power, just on the bag of second, fired the first base and got the third double play of the night. So White Sox, now pounding Jerry Staley on the back, Aparicio on the back, everybody on the back.